Lindsley Lowell is a marketing and PR executive with over 22 years of experience. From Boston, after graduating from Boston University, Lindsley conquered New York, working with top authors like Nicholas Evans and Geddes and Susie Orman, uh, doing national multi-city tours and getting clients on shows like Today, Good Morning America, CNN. I was actually contacted by CNN uh, yesterday. They're looking to uh, interview some of our business people here in town. Entertainment Tonight and more. She then worked at uh, top consumer marketing PR agencies in New York and Los Angeles and launched a bi-coastal agency working with major brands like Coca-Cola, Keds, Mattel, Nautica, New York Fashion Week, Moet and Chandon, the city of Los Angeles, Sony Television, Chevy Chic, and Good Housekeeping Magazine, and now the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce as well. You can add that to your, your list there, your biography, Lindsay. <laughs> Currently a CMO and partner at the Myriad Agency, she combines traditional marketing strategies with current social media, digital marketing, and modern initiatives to make clients unicorns. She also works with influencers, creating brand relationships and brokering deals. So I will now turn it over to Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Can everyone hear me okay? Give me a little thumbs up. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Zoom party. <laughs> I want to first say congratulations to everyone for getting through whatever day it is. I think it's day 7042 of COVID-19. At least it feels that way. Um, you guys are great. I want to, everyone to give yourself a round of applause. Seriously. It's hard to praise ourselves, but thank you. Thank you for clapping for yourself because um, it's really important that you acknowledge that you're doing great. And I love what Steve said. He said, still open for business. And that is absolutely true. Even though we feel like we're in hibernation, um, this is a time when you can really focus on business and actually make progress happen. I'm going to start then with sharing my screen because um, I've got some things to talk about. I want this to really be a... Um, an idea generation uh, session for all of you, hopefully to inspire you. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to my slideshow. All right, can everyone see that? Give me a thumbs up. Woohoo! All right, we're in business. All right, so marketing at the time of COVID. So I thought this was really interesting and I think it's, it's a great incentive for us is when the Great Plague of London was going around in 1665, Cambridge University shut down and Isaac Newton was forced to stay home. During this time, he invented calculus, parts of optic theory, and allegedly, while sitting in his garden, he saw an apple fall from a tree that inspired his understanding of gravity and the laws of motion. What this tells us is that innovation can happen out of these times. And I want all of you to really see this time as a time that you can regroup, restructure, renew, uh, so he, I'm here to have, give you some ideas that hopefully will help get your mind going, get your creativity up, and inspire you to for action. All right, what I want to focus on is disruptive marketing. Um, disruptive marketing is something that a lot of companies don't do, but they should be doing. This is where innovation happens. Um, disruptive marketing is when a company turns all of their marketing rules upside down, shakes things up and changes perception, not just about their company, but about the entire industry. So usually the largest disruptive marketing cases are when someone changes the entire industry. And a great example is Starbucks. If you look at what Starbucks, you know, coffee was coffee, right? <laughs> Until Starbucks came along and said, oh no, there's designer coffee, there's chic coffee. And they really changed the game and they were disruptive, disruptive marketers in the uh, world of coffee. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to go and create an, an entirely different industry or concept, but it does mean that you can use some of the tools of disruptive marketing in your own strategy and business. And disruptive marketing asks companies to rethink their whole brand, not just their marketing and advertising strategy. So often brands and companies are tweaking constantly their advertising, their marketing, but what you really need to be focusing on is everything. Uh, they must be ready to change your business model, their products and services, and their communication to the outside world. Disruption can be risky, but maintaining the exact same business model for many years is even more risky. And what I say is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, doesn't apply here. So, so many of us do business with blinders on, right? We're doing the same things over and over again, 
thinking that everything's fine, everything's great the way we do business. But often uh, it's times like these that come around and we say, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to change things up and create some different ways of doing business. And I think it's a great tool. Right now can be a great time for you to really change things up and improve your, your business. Um, often I say business is like a house. So you're living in your house, everything's great, no problem. You kind of ignore that squeaky door, right? You ignore that window that won't shut properly. It isn't until something massive happens, like a pipe bursting, or you're maybe putting your house up for sale, that you have to take inventory and say, oh, geez, I really need to change things up. I need to fix that, I need to fix that. Well, guess what COVID is? It's a giant pipe bursting. And this is a time that we say, okay, what are we doing now and how can we improve things? Um, okay, it's time to change. And again, I'm not talking about drastic change. So don't look at me and go, oh, Lindsley, please give me a break. I've already got so much to do. I've got so much on my plate. I don't have time for this. I can't change things. I'm just maintaining my life. I'm not talking about huge change. I'm talking about minor little changes. You know, we've, we've been told that to create a new strategy or a new way of doing things, it's about 30 days. I think it's about 28 days to create a new habit. So, and that can be a little, little change. You talk about people who have like massive weight loss and all they did was start with a walk. Every day, a walk, no big deal, just take a walk. Business is the same way. Small, small changes can make massive, massive improvements. So I'm talking about empowering yourself. So number one is evaluation, right? This is when you go back into your mind and into your business and really look at your business, bottom line, everything about it, dissect it, analyze it. And I will tell you that if all you do for all of May, besides everything else that you have to do, is this step, which is evaluation, you have made progress. So that's looking at your assets. And I want to say the number one asset is you. It's actually yourself. So, so often we don't look at our own attributes. We forget the kinds of things we've done in our lives. Um, I know recently that I had to help someone with a resume and they were looking for a, another position and we went through the resume and they said, I completely forgot that I did that. <laughs> so often we forget what we've accomplished. So again, remember that you are the, your biggest asset and then also your employees. Um, what do they bring to the table? What do they offer? What is your expertise? Expertise, obviously. And then also strengths and weaknesses. Um, it's not often that we go back to the roots of our company and look at all of these things. Usually it's happening when you're starting a company, maybe when you're doing a merger, Maybe when someone wants to acquire your business, you do all of these things. You have to do these things. I'm asking you to do these things now. Uh, look at your strengths and weaknesses, write them down, go through them. Now you can really look at things and, and, and go forward with a very educated, knowledgeable standpoint. Um, USPs, your unique selling propositions, right? What is it that makes you unique and different than all of your competitors in the industry as a whole? Also revenue streams, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this, but revenue streams are really important. How are you making money? Um, obviously with things like restaurants, um, catering companies, events companies, um, nail salons, estheticians, anything that demands an in-person environment, they're having a lot of struggles right now, and this is where I really wanna to try to help some of those people. Um, motivation, okay, we all need to be motivated. You get up in the morning, you look outside, you go, okay, it's another day in COVID. So what inspires you? Is it reading a great business book? Is it listening to music? Um, and one thing I really wanna encourage people, and I'm talking to myself here, get off of Netflix, get off of it. Just stop watching so much television. Recently, a few nights ago, it was seven o'clock at night, I started watching Netflix, and at 11 p.m. I said, I just watched four hours of television don't do it get off watch don't watch it do other things that are going to be productive for your brain for your mind for your mental health don't watch the world go by be active in the world whether it's reading a business book whether it's talking to people whether it's really thinking about what how you can be creative um, also content creation right now is a really great time to look at your social media 
and start creating some content and also looking at your goals, right? Write down your goals. What are they? Short-term and long-term. Some people do daily goals and then weekly goals and then yearly goals. Depends on what works for you. But I, every morning, have a daily task list. So that's a great thing to do. And even just checking off those daily tasks can make you feel really amazing about yourself in terms of progress. Okay, proactive. Have a strategy, have a plan. What is your strategy going forward? We're all sitting in hibernation and we're all maintaining, right? But what's gonna happen when this COVID quarantine lifts? What is your plan? What does the rest of the year look like for you? A lot of businesses are already taking this year as a loss. That's fine, but you need to look at the long term, the rest of the year and the year after that. What is your plan for that time? Study. Maybe you need to take a virtual class. There's so many classes available online. Maybe you're not great at understanding social media. Maybe you don't understand CRMs. Take an online class. A lot of them are free. Learn something new. Take a different language. These are just great things for your mind. Keep it active. And then promote. How are you going to promote your business in this new way of doing business? Uh, if you're not using social media, you really need to start doing that. I always say a lot of people are using antiquated forms of marketing. You need to step into the modern world and use these tools to your best ability. Okay, outreach. I always say that business starts with communication. I don't know if you all agree with that, but for me, I've seen it over and over in any kind of business I've ever worked with. And I've been doing public relations and communications for over 20 years. It starts with communication. So if you're sitting on the sidelines and just doing your own business, but not talking to people, you're really losing out on a lot of prospects for new business, for innovation, for strategy, all of these things that really can help. So in terms of outreach, how are you communicating? What tools are you using? Uh, customers, your customer base is gold, right? They tell you what they want. I will tell you one amazing thing, the Dave, the creator of Wendy's, he never did a lot of public uh, press. He really didn't like to do public press, but one time he did a giant press conference and he was asked to attend and he went in and a journalist got up and they said, Dave, can you tell us what is the secret to your success? And his answer was this simple and this genius. I asked my customers what they wanted and I gave it to them. So do you really know what your customers want? Do you know what they're not getting from you that they want to get from you? Are you doing any kind of surveys? Are you talking to your customers? Um, Deborah talked earlier offline about um, a company that did a survey and they incentivized it by offering a gift certificate. If you filled out a survey, ask your customers to do that. You need to get feedback. The only way you could ever improve your marketing, your business is with feedback from your customer base. Also community. Who are you reaching out to? Maybe you're a real estate person. Are you reaching out to other real estate people? Um, are you in the medical field? If you look at all the nurses and doctors that are coming together just to feel that camaraderie, where are you getting your camaraderie from? Uh, and then also partnerships. Who can you reach out to that is a non-competitive brand or a company that you could align forces and go forward and have allies that are going to strengthen your company and your brand? The other one is work. I can't sugarcoat it. <laughs> work is work. And you have to work in order to get those watershed moments, right? So whatever you're going to do, create a strategy, create a plan, and then attack. Evolve. So this is what will happen when you do all of these steps is you will evolve. You will learn, you will pivot, and you will grow. That's amazing. Roadmap. And that's what you will get out of this is you will achieve having a path, knowing a plan, knowing exactly the steps and seeing the path downward, the road ahead, you will see the future if you can do all of these great steps. And like I said, don't have to do all of these today. You don't have to do all these tomorrow. Maybe take one or two things from each. Think about it just to get the creative mind flowing. This will be really a great asset to you and your business. All right, progress. This is the one thing I say to every person I talk to. Same equals same change equals change.
And that is true. If you do business the same way, in the same manner, and do your marketing and your communication in the same way that you've been doing for years, everything will stay the same. And I've talked to some businesses and they're like, my business is fine. You know, I get most of my business from word of mouth, referrals, everything's fine. Great. If you're doing great and you're happy and you don't want to improve your business or expand or have more sales, then fine. That's great. But if you change just one little thing, imagine the possibilities of having more business happen, talking to more people, of expanding your reach. Small risks can lead to big rewards, right? Take a, figure out what your small risks are. Obviously, if you start an entire new business and things like that, that's a lot of time, investment, money. But if you take a small risk and try something new and different in your business, it can lead to a whole different revenue stream and way of doing business for your, for your company. Okay, let's look at some capabilities here. And I wanna look at some uh, people who are doing it well. What inspires me is watching other companies do business well. And it's been amazing to watch the creativity and the innovation that's coming out of these times. So one thing I want to look at is soul cycle. We all know soul cycle, right? People are addicted to it. They go, they get on that bike. There's camaraderie. It's amazing. Well, all of a sudden no one can go. So the first thing the soul cycle did was they were offering people to, to deliver a bike to their residents amazing and have them do the workout at home. So now they can still bike at home. So they would drop off the bike. You get to work out, you rent the bike. So now they have revenue stream coming in, right? And they're still doing, be able to do classes online. Another thing they did is they did a giveaway. Giveaways are great at this time. Everyone thinks, oh my gosh, we had to conserve money. We're not having money coming in. This is a great time to do a giveaway to remind people of the kind of brand you are, how exciting you are, what are your offerings, what are your services, and you get engagement with your customer base. Okay, um, OC Mom blog, she's great. I love her, I follow her. This is something that Miss Mini Donuts did. Amazing, you got kids at home, there's nothing to do. They will drop off a whole kit that you can decorate donuts. I'm seeing bakeries do this with cookies, uh, decorate your own cookies. Incredible innovation, very, very smart. Zach Mesquit, is an amazing hairstylist. He's a client of mine, and he has been innovative long before COVID. This guy is 30 years old, and let me tell you, at under 30, he's one of the most world-renowned, famous celebrity colorists. And what he did is several years ago, not now, several years ago, he saw a vision of how can he impact hairstylists that can't be in a major city? How can he help teach them? How can he help educate them? How can he talk to them? And he created a online platform where he teaches methods and formulas and things. And this is an incredible thing. If you're in the middle of Iowa or wherever, Nebraska, and you can't get really amazing classes, he brought it to them. And this has been a revenue stream for him that's been incredibly profitable for years. So, and I always say to this, if you're in the service industry, you have to think about how can you make money in your sleep, right? This is why a lot of people create products because products make money in your sleep. You don't have to physically be in front of someone. You don't have to be talking to someone. You don't have to be doing anything. Products make money in your sleep. This is why a lot of people do books, right? Because that's a great revenue stream. So I always say, are you making money in your sleep? How can you make money in your sleep? If you're in the service industry, if you're a chef, if you're a wait staff, if you're a bartender, if you're an esthetician, if you're a nail technician, if you get sick, if something like COVID happens, how are you gonna make money? So think of other revenue streams for you. Okay, another examples, um, real estate market, right? This has been happening for a couple of years now where people are offering virtual tours especially you've got a lot of um, out-of-country buyers, unfortunately, China, uh, but you've got a lot of out-of-country buyers who can't physically be there to see a property. They're doing virtual tours. I have a, a friend in New York who is with a real estate firm. They are selling properties sight unseen right now. God bless them. 
it's pretty amazing. They are actually selling properties sight unseen with a really, really amazing virtual tour. Uh, one thing I would recommend if you're in the real estate business right now, look at the fodder, look at the communication. What are people talking about? Everyone is baking at home, right? Everyone's having to cook at home. So what can you do? How can you use that to your benefit? Well, if I was in real estate, I've been doing a whole series showing kitchens, kitchens and homes that you are selling that are amazing, saying you could be cooking in this kitchen next year. You could be baking bread in this fabulous kitchen. Think of all the possibilities that come from these times. Also doctors, right? This is another trend that's been happening for a long time is doctors are, are doing on-demand services, right? So you may not physically be able to get to that doctor. Maybe it's something simple, like you think you have a cold and you don't really wanna go into the doctor. They're allowing you to be seen online. So great innovators. All right, so ideas. Are there new products and services that you have? Go into your business and look. What product and services do you have that you're not offering? Restaurants, okay, there's a catering company that I used to work with and they were, you know, breaking their backs, catering job after catering job. They were doing incredible work. They were working with celebrities in LA. They had incredible jobs, but they were tired and they had a brittle that they were passing out as a little thank you gift at the end of every event. People were going crazy over the brittle. And I said, guys, why aren't you selling this brittle online? Why aren't you marketing this brittle? That's another revenue stream that can make money in your sleep. So products and services that you aren't offering that you need to offer. If you're a restaurant, you should absolutely have a product line. Listen to your customer base. What do they like? What products are they dying over? I know Cheesecake Factory um, just came out a line, line of ice creams. Um, what things are you doing that people love? If you are a spa and you have an incredible candle and every time they walk in, they're saying, gosh, a candle smells amazing. Maybe your store. Start selling things online. Got to get with the times, guys. Okay, virtual classes, right? Are you an expert in something? What classes can you offer online? Uh, what meetings can you do online that can help people? Um, one of my colleagues works with Beachbody. I don't know if you guys know that. Obviously, they're doing extremely well these days because it's online streaming exercise classes. But they've been doing virtual Zooms for years to engage all of their coaches together and, and create a community online. So what meetings can you do online that could be impactful for your business? Expand your customer base. Are you selling to the same customer base? Are you same, selling to the same um, age group? How can you innovate and, and change up your services to attract a different customer base? Uh, sales channels, same thing. Are you only offering an in-person service? Again, if you're a store, and they have to come to you in the store. Start thinking about other sales channels. Can you sell online? Restructure, we talked about this a little bit. What do you need to restructure? Unfortunately, a lot of companies are having to restructure right now, right? They're gonna have, they're downsizing, they're figuring out different ways of doing businesses, they, they have to. So what's a way that you can restructure? Learn, um, surveys, surveys are amazing. They, they teach you, they give you knowledge. Knowledge is power. What do you not know about your business that you need to know? There are survey companies like Qualtrics, which I really like. They are expensive. Um, if you already have a customer base, then reach out to them and do a survey. CRM, if you're using a CRM um, software, that's great. Uh, giveaways and contests, we talked a little bit about this. But again, reach out to your customer, offer them something. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but right now is actually a great time to offer your customer something. Tips and advice. What tips can you offer? What advice can you, how can you communicate with your audience? Um, I spoke recently with a company that is an at-home organizing company. They go in and they organize your closets and, and your kitchen and things like that. So I recommended that they go and use social media to offer quick tips right now to educate people and also to engage with that customer. Because once COVID lifts, those customers will say, oh, I remember that person and they were so good, the tips were amazing. That will continue the momentum of that relationship with your customer base and your potential customer base. Give back, it's a great time to give back, but be, be genuine about it, right? You see these people saying, oh, 
10% off my services and I'm going to donate those to, to COVID, um, you know, relief. You really need to be a little bit more genuine about that. How are you giving back? Um, is it, is there longevity in what you're going to do to give back? Um, have a plan for that. Humor is a great way to engage your community. Right now, everyone needs a break. If you look at things that are trending online, a lot of it is humor driven, humor related. So how can you use humor to engage your customer, um, but still talk about your business in a fun, in a fun way? And to end, we are in the business of progress. Progress is progress, and we should all be progressing at all times, no matter what the situation is in life. So on that note, I'm gonna stop sharing this. I'm hoping this was helpful for all of you. And um, yeah, I'd love to take questions and I will turn it back to Steve. Okay, thank you, Lindsley. That was a great talk. Um, I think we did have a couple of questions in the chat room here, so I'm gonna flip over to that uh, real quickly and get the chat questions. So, and if you do have a question you wanna ask, just uh, put it into the chat and we'll get to it. Uh, there's not too many here. Um, this is from Michelle Miller. She said, some people think that marketing to potential businesses is insensitive because companies are not in the mood to spend. Your thoughts? I disagree 100%. Um, people are spending money. Um, does anyone know how toilet paper sales are going? <laughs> um, business, look, it's not the end of the world. It's not the zombie apocalypse. This will end and people will come out of this and they will be spending money. We're in a consumer driven economy. We always will be. Yes, we're going more um, bearish than bullish. However, um, be innovative. If you're innovative about your services, maybe you need to sell a smaller portion of your services. Doesn't mean downplay the cost of your services or, or reduce the, the value of your service, but it means figuring out different incentives of way, ways to encourage your customer to engage with you that might not be buying all in, but buying a, a, a little piece of your business. So services, same thing, right? Someone say, have a 30 minute session with me versus coming on as like a full retainer client, things like that. But people are buying things, yes. Very good. Um, okay, this one's from Daniel Hemmings. How do you create change when your ownership executives are reluctant to that change? My team handles the frontline client interactions and know what our clients need. However, change is the most difficult thing for our company. So how do you convince the higher ups that change is required? Daniel, that is such a great question. And unfortunately, that's the crux of a lot of, um, a lot of companies, right? People don't want to innovate. They're like, they're in the mode of if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I will say the number one way you can is evidence and debate. Okay, so you have to bring them evidence and hard facts are hard facts. So if you're talking to your customers um, and you have evidence, you have that communication um, that you can show them and say, look, this is what our customers are asking for. This is what we are, this, we are not doing these things. So you have to be able to come to the table. I, I always say it's judge and jury, right? So your bosses are the jury, the judge, and you're the jury. So you have to go to them and say, this is what I found. I've done um, some analysis. And then you have to come up with recommendations. So the, the thing that employers don't like is when people complain without some sort of strategy, right? So you have to come also to the table with some tactics of how to innovate effectively and how the change can be made um, with the changes that you're, that you're offering. Okay. Um, you know, going back to that, uh, since I don't see any other questions, I'll just make a comment. You know, we, we struggled also with uh, the question of whether to send out invoices. It's kind of tees off of uh, Michelle's question about, you know, marketing to people who don't want to spend money. And I probably have <laughs> a lot of members that want, don't want to spend money now as well. But we did feel it was important that if we're going to survive as an organization, you know, money is important. Things are not free here. I mean, although I am working for free now, I furloughed myself, but we do have, you know, um, some salaries still to pay and rent and other things. And, you know, if obviously if people can't pay, they're going to let you know. And we certainly gave them that option. Um, but, uh, you know, you have to think about the, the, the viability of your organization. Um, you have to understand the challenges that your customers have, I think. 
and uh, you know, work with that. You know, we're not going to, we're not terminating anybody here. If you don't pay your dues, we're not cutting you off, at least not in the, for the foreseeable future. We certainly want to partner with you and work with you and get through these challenges together. Um, we only ask that those who, you know, can still support the chamber because their businesses are doing well and their income streams have not been interrupted or, or not significantly that they recognize the value that we've given over the years.